Welcome to Meaningful, Measurable Marketing. We are the dames of Data Dames Marketing. I'm Jen Carroll. And I'm Annalisa Hilliard. We are digital marketers, and our purpose is to help clients align their marketing strategies with their business goals and objectives, which can, as they sound, can be much bigger than any marketing campaign. Um, In fact, our mission is to provide every client with meaningful online marketing, It's measured by metrics that matter. Mm. (laughs) Lots of M's in that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You're good at alliteration. Yes, we are. Um. (laughs) So if you like what you hear today on this podcast, you can connect with us on datadamesmarketing.com. And we're also on LinkedIn and Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Gen C Writer. And you can find me at A Hilliard M. So this is our first podcast, and we're we want to break down what meaningful marketing that's measurable really means. Yeah, um, actually, first I was going to say we're huge podcast enthusiasts, so we couldn't resist giving this uh, platform a try. Yes, and yes, we do want to take some time to break down meaningful, measurable, and what those have to do with marketing. We're, we're, we we had to we had to jump in with this uh, with some yeah, yeah we're gonna cheers. click here cheers we're we're drinking um, a market Chinook strike yeah market garden we're giving a shout out to market garden in Cleveland good beer good beer they rock so and cheers. if they want to send us a free case feel free right <laughs> thanks market garden what do we mean by meaningful marketing anytime we meet with a client for the first time or talk with a prospective client, we really want to hone in on what their objectives and goals for business are. That's a much higher level question than um, what kind of marketing do you want to do? Because um, if we don't know where they want to go as a business, if they want to grow a certain segment, if they want to grow in a certain market, if they want to um, improve customer loyalty or um, those, if we don't know those kinds of things, we can't align any type of marketing, digital or otherwise, uh, with, um, you know, with those, with those goals. And in the end, uh, marketing will probably end up failing or at least not, at least not accomplishing what they wanted to accomplish. So, Meaningful marketing is uh, marketing that's aligned with objectives and goals, um, and we are focused and we are defined in what the business wants to accomplish, what our client wants to accomplish. Yeah, it's really directional too because, um, you know, defining kind of where where we're headed um, gives us the the ability to then measure uh, outcomes and. and kind of focus what we're looking at, what we're trying to achieve. Um, and in the measurement part, then we can we can uh, look at metrics that are tied to those goals and say, you know, we either, you know, hit those goals or we missed the mark. And it allows us to kind of look at where we need to move forward from there. So it, it, it helps... Um, uh, not drive strategy. It's uh, it's it really actually in, just informs strategy, um, but it's it's a, a big part of the whole marketing piece. And I think you really kind of um, transitioned there to the measurable piece of marketing. Of course, I know, right? Because you are you are truly <laughs> the thing. data. We're both we're both the. Is it? Are we going to go by data dames or data dames? This is a long time. I say data. You say data. All right, tomato, yeah. tomato. Yeah. All right. So, um, so sh- yes, of course, as as the true um, data analyst mm-hmm. and this um, marketing partner and this business partnership, uh, she loves the outcomes side of it. Um, so, I guess the the measurable. You can drown in a sea of data or data. And how do you ensure that that, that doesn't happen? I mean, um, well, again, it, it, you you look at measuring the outcomes that are tied back to the goals. So you're not looking at 
every piece of information because there is so much of it um, out there that you want to look at specific things and and that really helps your client know whether they're being um, successful or not. Yeah, and helps you, again, know how you can move forward. But sometimes um, you you can't move forward on the trajectory you're on. And then I know uh, kind of a popular word in the, you know, right now is pivoting. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about pivoting and when we're measuring. Yeah, so, you know, if, you know, um, as you go along and you implement uh, the different marketing strategies that you put together in the alignment uh, plan, you, you know, you start seeing maybe this isn't being as successful as we want, or, um, you know, maybe we, we have a good foundation, but we need to um, continue to tweak it and improve it. Um, and that's really where um, looking at reports and at data really helps um, determine whether or not uh, you're you're going in the direction that you want to go, and and if it's not getting the results that you want, you either yeah you either um, uh, make adjustments uh, on that segment or you pivot in a whole different direction. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So just to kind of, I guess, to summarize the the meaningful side, and actually we kind of forgot one one key component I'm going to put in here, um, is again, knowing that the objectives and goals that you want to accomplish as a business and aligning your marketing plan to that. And another aspect of meaningful marketing is helping your customers or clients overcome their challenges so that every time you craft a message, whether it's a message about your brand or a message about a product or a service that you have your customers clearly in focus and you, your, your narrative, the, your messaging narrative is uh, very clear on how you're helping them overcome or deal with their challenges. Um, so that's another aspect of the meaningful marketing. And then the measurable, as, as Annalisa um, said, is um, helping you to know if you're actually going in the right direction. And hopefully you will be in most cases, but sometimes you're not. And that's what the data is there to tell us. And then we can either you know continue moving forward or pivot as she was talking about. So some of the things that we'd like to explore in this podcast going forward um, we're always going to come back to those two, um, those two defining words is what we're sharing meaningful and is, you know, hopefully what we're sharing in some way measurable. So we're definitely going to be focusing on that in this podcast. We want to give you marketing ideas that you can apply in your own business. Um, we plan to have some interviews. We already have some folks in mind. Um, you know, we might have some episodes where we share ideas and experience, um, but whatever the structure, we promise to deliver on meaningful and measurable concepts. So we thought this would also be a good opportunity to talk about who we are, what our background and experiences. Um, I have been in marketing and advertising in some shape or form for 24 years. Uh, my first job out of college was at an advertising agency, um, but I also um, worked in-house at a, a global manufacturer. Um, interestingly enough, I had some stints in human resources and actually in their in the manufacturing, a manufacturing plant itself. So definitely some, um, uh, you know, I wanted to say boots on the ground. I don't know if that's quite the right term, but very close to, um, you know, the day-to-day -day functioning of, of a manufacturer. And uh, I had my own um, copywriting business um, for 10, 11 years and also worked in-house at a hospital for seven years as well before starting out on our day-to-day -day marketing adventure. Mm -hmm. Um so I am 
I always think of myself first and foremost as a writer, but more and more now in this part of my career, I think of myself just as much a strategist as as a writer um, because I realize that writing content without having a strategy, without having goals, uh, usually does not accomplish what you know, the client um, wants to accomplish. So again, I think of myself now as, as a strategist as much as a writer. I have spent a great deal of time doing social media as well. I don't really enjoy the day-to-day of social media, but I do love coming up with strategies for making social media uh, an effective um, outlet for your brand messaging, as well as other forms of messaging that that you want to do for your business. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Elisa? Yeah, I've been in digital marketing for about 10 years now. Um, I started out after college, actually during college, I got a job uh, slinging coffee at a big corporate coffee store that many of you probably frequent. Um, I won't say the name. Um, but anyway, I started out there as a entry level, uh, coffee slinger and moved my way up into, uh, management. And, uh, in 2009, when, uh, things were a little bleak in the economy. Like uh, now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ironically, uh, I, uh, was let go of, uh, they cut their middle management. And so, I uh, went on to do some HR, and uh, a couple years after that, I started an internship um, with an agency doing link building, which is kind of like old school uh, digital marketing. Um, Link building was a big aspect of kind of gaming the system when uh, digital marketing was kind of first a buzzword, and... Um, we'll probably talk about that in a, in a separate episode, but I uh, started out as a link builder and then kind of grew into the uh, more of the search engine optimization, uh, doing keyword research, um, content optimization, and uh, just kind of grew from there as the industry has grown um, more into uh, conversion rate optimization, usability, Um, and then of course the analytics piece, which, um, I mean, I I think it's really hard to do marketing today without, uh, doing, doing analytics and looking at, at your data. Um, again, just for that information piece, uh, I mean, it's, it's available. And so, you know, why not use it? It's, it's super helpful in, in knowing what's working and what's not working and, Um, I I really, I love that piece of, of digital marketing is the, the data piece. So before we, before we go further with the background, and I think you hinted on it earlier when we were talking, but the, uh, there's a, like a buzzword, buzz phrase in our industry about be data driven. Can you talk a little bit about why you don't necessarily agree with the concept of data driven? And what do you recommend instead? Sure. Um, I mean, with data, there is always a measure of error. Um, You're not going to get 100% clean data all the time, uh, whether it be your tracking breaks or, um, you know, right now we're dealing with um, uh, privacy laws that are, you know, causing browsers and and websites to change the way they collect data. And so as those changes happen, obviously, you know, it it affects um, the data in some way. And so you don't ever have a perfect uh, set of data to to look at. And so, um, you know, to use data to drive your strategy uh, just doesn't, isn't the, isn't the best uh, approach. Um, It should always be used kind of alongside of, again, your bigger business objectives and goals uh, and and kind of, uh, yeah, used as as more just uh, information gathering uh, to to whether, you know, 
what what you're doing and and what you're implementing, whether it's helping to achieve those those objectives. Yeah, I think actually we should explore that in another podcast episode where we we really get down into data driven versus data informed. So I we think, have so many ideas. For oh my gosh, future podcast. We do. <laughs> too. So Elisa and I met actually at that agency where she was doing originally her her, her link building internship, which mm-hmm. turned into obviously uh, a many, many years of honing her SEO craft. And yes. uh, so, yep, that's that's how we met. You were the word nerd. I was, chief word nerd. I was the chief word nerd there and uh, doing doing content and, and social media. And I think we connected over a certain radio station oh, we both listened to. And we're like, we did. I remember that like day. conversation. I was like, it was, yeah, I listened to this, you know, I was listening to this radio station and was talking about that. And you're oh, like, we oh, can say what it was. It's oh, NPR. Yeah. It's oh, NPR. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to offend anyone. <laughs> like, this isn't political. Right, so. right. Uh, but yeah, we discovered that we both loved NPR. Yes. And uh, that's where the conversation uh, really took off at that yeah. point. In our, and we, also our friendship. We so. figured we could be co-workers and friends from there, there forward. That's thus, true. Thus forward. So nine years later. Nine years later. Nine we years are. later. Here we are. Um so both of us have a background in traditional advertising and marketing agencies. Mm-hmm. And um, while we definitely respect our colleagues who work for um, advertising and mar- marketing agencies, um, there are some aspects of the way that they function that has kind of pushed us in the, we, we consider ourselves to be consultants. Mm-hmm. Um, we really want to come alongside clients and, help them again, go figure out that strategy piece that aligns with their objectives and goals, um, as opposed to being in, in the position of, um, just being people who, who carry out marketing ideas and campaigns and, and without any, without any input, we really want to be roll up our sleeves and get dirty. Yeah. 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 We really want to be partners and consultants with our, with our clients. So um, I don't know if we want to talk a little bit about um, how we feel that a lot of times um, agencies aren't necessarily involved with the strategy, um, that we feel like it, it becomes lost um, or there or that there's a tendency to um, get cookie cutter. Like, oh, okay, everybody, everybody needs some billboards and everybody needs some radio ads and everybody needs some uh, website and, you know, kind of like. I I think probably that comes from having the structure that they have and the process that they have as as an agency. You have kind of that, um, typically you have like a project manager, so they're really your point of contact with the client. And so... um, they're the one communicating and not necessarily doing the actual work. They're just kind of relaying the messages. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's it's um, a disconnect there. Yeah, I would say that's that's a good way of of putting it. There's a disconnect between um, sometimes what what what's best for the client or or what the the client needs in the moment um, and the actual work that's being done. Um, so this podcast is going to evolve. We're, again, just getting started, just kind of figuring this out. If you have liked what you've heard so far, again, you can find us at datadamesmarketing.com. And you can also find us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Right. And join us again in two weeks. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to make this a an every two weeks we were we were kind of like joking about is that bi-monthly semi-monthly you know and I mean I've been doing content I mean I've been a writer for a long time actually I should have mentioned that my background also included being an English teacher so you would think Uh-oh. I know right I, I used to have a, a yeah a red pen um, mm-hmm. but 
that I used frequently. I can't use that on a computer. <laughs> right. Well, you can. You yeah, can. Well, you can. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, thank God you don't. <laughs> right. Thank God I don't. Thank God I don't. But anyway, you would think by now, you know, without looking it up, it'd be whether I know bi-monthly or semi-monthly, but. So just every 14 days. Yeah. Check every 14 out. days. Check us out. We'll, we'll probably be posting about our, our new our new podcasts on our social medias. So And on our website. Hopefully we need to get, we need to get that, we need to get that page ready. Yeah. Join us. Join us. Thanks so much.